When things go wrong, as they sometimes will When the road you're trudging seems all uphill When the funds are low and the debts are high And you want to smile but you have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must but do not ever quit Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt. Assalamu alaikum and welcome, dear viewers from around the world, to another exciting episode of your favorite program, Let's Talk, with your favorite host, Malik, on your favorite program, Huda TV, channel Huda TV. And by the way, someone said to me recently, brother, maybe you should stop saying that because maybe Let's Talk's not their favorite program and maybe you're not their favorite host. But you know what? We're going to keep saying it anyways because it should be by now because you already know Huda TV is by far the premier is Islamic channel in the English language, but maybe I'm biased uh, because I work here. Give us a call live right now, 002-02-38-555-248 or 249. I feel like I'm selling used cars when I say that too fast like that. 002-02-38-555-248 or 249. We have an exciting episode for you guys. Give me an email at pulse at hood. Excuse me. Talk at hooded.tv. Talk at hooded.tv. And I've been receiving emails from some of our viewers who claim that Hooded TV is playing music on this channel. Please, if you have a, if you believe that, send me a specific uh, a claim. You know, say this program, you know, give us a proof because that's a big accusation. We don't play that stuff on this channel. Please email me if you th think that, but tell me which program you believe is playing music. And inshallah, I will, I promise I will check into it and take it off the program if that in fact uh, is the case. So you guys, thank you for staying tuned to Hooded TV. Let's talk. We have a very special program. You guys know about Hood Academy. If you don't know about it now, you have to uh, log on to your computer, stay in front of your screen though, and check out www.hoodaonlineacademy.com. We actually have the project manager of Hood Academy. He, I'm very pleased and honored to have him on the show. He's actually been a, an accomplished web developer for over, over 15 years in the Middle East as well as the United States. He, he is an accomplished e-marketer uh, based uh, e-commerce. He helps start up Muslim halal businesses and he, online, and he also helps establish, establish businesses and give them an online, uh, uh, online presence. Uh, Muslim halal businesses only, of course. Brother Omar Sharir, thank you, brother, so much for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Alaikum wa It's a real honor. Thank you for being on the show, brother. I'm thank really you. excited about this episode. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, brother. We have these handsome students, mashallah, in the studio audience. Assalamu alaikum. I want to I want to talk to this handsome brother in the front row. He's a, he's a, a hood of TV faithful brother, Muhammad Garba. Do you have the mic? Yeah, I have the mic. Please. Mashallah. Thank you, brother. I know. Actually, have you? Do you know about Hood Academy at all, brother? Yeah, I think I've been hearing about it so almost some times ago. I think it's, it's an online school, so but I think we still need more explanation about it. How does it operate? What are the things that they are doing there? How can it Masha benefit Allah. the Muslims or more? Yeah, thank you. Brother, right now, are you a seeker of knowledge? Yeah, I'm a seeker of knowledge. I'm, I'm studying Islamic studies at Al-Azhar Al University, Cairo. Masha Allah, and you're originally from? Nigeria. Where in Nigeria, brother? From Ilorin, Kuala State. I'm going to go with you one time on vacation, inshallah, okay? Inshallah, uh, you are highly welcome. <laughs> thank you, brother. Yeah. Brother Omar, what exactly yeah. is your role uh, at Hood Academy? Well, uh, I'm, the, I'm the, the person who designed the entire project. Okay, mashallah. So the concept was given to me. And then I had to take the concept and make it a reality. Okay. So, so that's, you put that's the vision into play, so to speak. Yeah, the vision. They gave me the vision. And then I had to make it happen. Yeah, that's so a big task, mashallah. Yeah. Why did they contact you, brother? Because, you know, we are based in Cairo. There's many web developers. Why did they contact you? Well, you know, uh, I, I won't downplay uh, anyone that can do design or web development or anything right. like that. Right, right. But uh, it's, it's another thing when you talk about making money online and uh, when you have people that have to put the credit card information or send right. money somewhere. Uh, you have to know how to do that in a secure way right. to guarantee that uh, the people get the services that they pay for. You want to protect your investment, like basically. Right. So you have to have someone that's, uh, uh, experienced, that's experienced in this particular uh, side of, uh, right. of the Internet, of the web development. Brother, I mean, so they called me. Okay. But I mean, you made an excellent point when you spoke about the financial aspect. A lot of people are asking, uh, why is Hood Academy charging money in the first place? Why are they charging money for these services? Uh, you know, uh, some people don't understand what it takes to do uh, this uh, production and uh, uh, video production and right. these things Websites, on, a, on videos. a scale like this. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm speaking specifically about Huda TV now okay. because Huda Academy is a part of Huda TV. Right. 
So uh, the, the revenue that comes in from Huda Academy goes into the Huda TV pot and it right. helps Huda TV uh, continue on in its, in its mission. Right, okay. So if people actually came to visit, they would realize that this is much like, uh, like a, a, a major recording studio in, right, in, right. The, in the West. Right. And in order to pay for this type of production, you need funds from somewhere. Okay. So the idea was to try to generate, generate funds from Huda as opposed to always asking people for to, money. to give money. Yeah, right. So that <coughs> that's the reason why there's a fee attached to it. Right. And of course, you're, you're providing a quality service, so it's not an outrageous concept. Uh, and it's the fees are not actually that, that high. Right. You know, but it, it varies from country to country. Right. You know, because yeah. it is in U.S. dollars. So, right. So $50 in one place is worth more than fifty dollars in, in another place yeah that's an excellent point yeah. so we want to clarify Huda academy is not a business venture this is a non-profit uh we're paying to keep it run you're paying to keep it running well you know it's it's uh you have to look at it as a business venture from some angles so that you can you can have some degree of professionalism okay but uh no it's not it's not there so someone can get rich or someone can you know right live right. off of, of that no okay. it's not like that Okay. It's, it's just to support uh, Huda TV and Huda TV's mission. Okay, great, excellent. What about those people who say, you know, I would like to enroll in Huda Academy. I'm a, I'm, I would like to seek knowledge and enroll in this, but I simply can't afford it. I'm from a developing country or the West, but I can't uh, afford these fees. They're expensive for me. What can they uh, do? Okay, uh, if you can imagine, okay, you have uh, in the world, you have gr groups of people that have wealth, and right. then you have groups of a large group of people that don't have the bigger uh, group, the right? Resource. The bigger group is the, those who don't, don't have. have, right? Uh, what we did for uh, for this uh, to 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 help those people who don't have, we created a scholarship program okay. so that people that have uh, wealth can get invest in the education right. of those people who who don't. Right. And it's it's more than just like here's some sadaka, go eat some bread or something like this right it's, right it's more or less like okay i'm investing in the education of someone right who really is serious about it and and, and wants the education and after they get the education they plan on giving dawa or right. doing something for the religion and so the person that paid for that inshallah ta'ala they get a reward yeah right for that person who who uh yeah, turns around and gives that dawa like a continuous dawa we can say uh, continuous reward think about this though uh, this is something you should really think about uh, while I've been in Egypt, I've I had to ride some buses. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> right. And uh, someone would argue over a uh, half of Egyptian pound. Right, which is about they, 25 cents, it's, right? No, less it's than like that. less than that, five cents. Oh, five, okay, right. Okay, I mean, they argue. And, ah, right, you know? right. And then I look like, I'm thinking to myself, man, I can pay you, pay the, the Yeah, the, I can pay that Here, for, take yeah. it so y'all don't argue. Right, right. But the the five, the fifty, the half Egyptian pound to me, is different than the half Egyptian pound to For someone, someone else. else. Yeah. So that that has to be understood. Right. So if a person sees that a class is fifty dollars, they say, "Well, I spent fifty dollars at the cafe." Yeah. Okay. Right. So okay, instead of spending fifty dollars at the cafe, why don't you invest that? Invest that. Right. in your hereafter yeah. by sponsoring a student, student yeah. at Huda Academy. Because so really that's the idea. Yeah, that's a great point, Brother Omar, because if we really break down what we spend and where, we could definitely uh, afford that. Okay, say, for example, a viewer at home says, I would like to be sponsored or I would like to sponsor. Where do they go? Okay, uh, to, to uh, apply for a sponsorship, this is, this is an important point as well. Okay. Uh, we don't just take people that say, I want a sponsorship, and that's it. They have to fill out uh, an application. Okay. They have to have a letter of intent, tell us what you want to do with their sponsorship okay. so that we can look at that letter and follow up on the student to see if they fulfilled uh, what right. they said they wanted they to do. They demonstrate they're serious about this. Right, exactly. Right. So then the, the sponsor, that person can read the letter ah. and say, okay, this person, I, I, I know where they're from. Maybe they want to sponsor someone from a sp uh, specific country. Okay. And they want to know their objectives when, uh, when applying for the uh, sponsorship. Right, right, sure. So to answer your question, to, to, to apply for a sponsorship, you go to hudaonlineacademy.com okay. slash uh, scholarship. Oh, simple enough, fair enough, okay. okay. And to sponsor a student, you go to hudaonlineacademy.com okay. slash sponsor. Oh, 
Excellent. Okay. And those websites are working up. They're up and now and running. They're up and running. Okay. And also, a person can go to hudoonlineacademy.com and find it from and there. And then just click on the uh, the banners there so that they can uh, sponsor a student or okay. a student can sure can get okay. a sponsorship. Excellent, brother sure. Omar. That's I think that's an excellent point. Uh, as we know, the brother Mohammed Gubber from Azhar University, I think that you guys also have a, a sponsorship program that sponsors students from around the world. So it's nice to see Hood Academy doing that as well. But brother Omar, how does Hood Academy work exactly? People may say, you know, is it time sensitive? How, how does it work? Well, we, we when we thought about Huda Academy, we said that uh, uh, the student that wants to pursue an online education, generally, he's working or he's busy. He's in he's in the university, or right. his time is limited. Right. Okay. So the concept behind it was, okay, what we'll do is we'll record these lessons, and we'll make them actual lessons not like a TV show or okay. something like this, right. but it would be an actual lesson and they would get uh, the materials from the lesson and the books and the, all and these things. Okay. And, and the lesson would come to them every four days. Okay. Okay. And it would be stored in a student portal. Okay. So the student can come anytime and access the lesson and watch it. Okay. And now we're in the we're we're in the internet culture in the youtube culture and these right. type of things where right. people can sit all day and watch videos all day and things like this so uh it's just a natural extension of that right, it's right. The, the the huda academy videos are studio studio quality quality videos okay. it's not a webcam or something they're like produced this. right here in this, studio, in this studio with these cameras in this crew exactly right so so the person can watch it and be engaged Okay. And, it, and you get the different camera angles and things like this. Right. Okay. Perfect. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make with that is to say that uh, the, the student can watch it at any time and it's just like watching uh, a TV show. Right. Right. It's a professional but quality. It's yeah. professional quality. That's what I mean. Okay. By that. Excellent. Excellent point. Now, I know these days there's lots of online Islamic universities. Anybody just has to open up their Google and see that there's a lot. Mm -hmm. What does Huda Academy offer um, that puts it in a better position against its competition? Why? If I'm looking to, to become an online student at the Islamic University, why would I choose Hood Academy? Well, uh, first, of, first of all, uh, people are looking for different things when it comes to Islamic studies. And I won't, I won't say anything bad about any of the efforts that the sure, brothers are making out Yeah, out of here. course, of course, yeah. Uh, but um, the difference uh, with, Huda, with Huda Academy, number one is that you receive a certificate of completion. Right upon f completing each course right okay uh and uh, it's not uh, right now it's not a bachelor's degree program or master's degree we don't offer uh degrees. accreditation right now right we don't right. offer this we only offer c certificates of completion but the uh the way that the the courses are set up number one uh like i mentioned earlier the quality Right. The quality, I mean, it's a difficult to sit through a, a video that somebody did on their phone. Yeah, and webcam, YouTube like, quality is low quality. It's you know? bad quality. And yeah. it's like you don't feel confident. You can't, hear the, you can't hear what he's saying. And right, it's, yeah, it's bad like, lights, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like, what is this? Right. But again, alhamdulillah for their efforts. Yeah, you know? of course, of course. But uh, that's, that's one of the differences. You, you won't find this. I have yet to find something like this. Right, where The right. quality has been that good. That's uh, the first point. Uh, the second point is the system that we use. We've created a very complicated system because it's a, a system that delivers the lessons on a schedule. Okay. No matter when you sign up, you can sign up today, and you'll get uh, it every right. four days. And you can, s or someone else can sign up tomorrow and get it every four days. I see. So it it, it tracks every individual student. Okay. So this is a this is a system that okay. Uh, Maybe other people don't have that. People don't have access to. Okay. So those are the, those, uh, technically the differences are are very clear, but um, again it depends on what the student is looking for. When right. They, of course. When they're looking for education. You know, I like to say also, Huda TV does I, I believe provide an authentic source of information that people can oh, trust. Oh, that's another. Of course. So yeah. you feel comfortable with what you're learning from these people because they're trusted sources. Dr. Salah. Right. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Hatem Al Hajj, uh, Dr. Muhammad Saeed, and of course Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane. So you know what you're getting. Well, that's another point. That's another credibility. Point. Majority majority of the uh, instructors are people who are uh, have achieved high level yeah. of Islamic uh, studies. They're mostly education. doctors from uh, Al Azhar University, I believe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's another that's another benefit that yeah, you're, you're really learning from a trusted source. Yeah. You're not you're not learning from someone who has studied a few hours or a few. 
a few weeks and now he wants to give a class. Yeah, You're studying right. from yeah. people that you can trust, you yeah. can trust their knowledge. Yeah, of course. I believe Hood Academy is working on the reputation for the TV, like we said, so this goes, this goes hand in hand. Okay, so now you have Hood Academy, mashallah. I see that we're running ads and stuff on the channel, uh, but how are you getting the word out there to people? I imagine through social media, but how, uh, how does that work? Well, well, first of all, anyone, anyone that comes to uh, Huda Online Academy is encouraged to share the information with their friends and their family okay. in, in this way. And, and we use uh, social media for this. Okay. Uh, we, use, uh, to, we encourage people to post on different forums and, right. and li make links on their websites if they have websites. So uh, the, I guess the message would be to anyone watching now, when you go to Huda Academy or you get an email from Huda Academy, forward it over to your, to your friends, list. to your mailing list. Uh, also, if you see something that needs deserves a like or something like for Facebook or something like that, right. like it. Right. You know, because the, these things end up spreading the message. Right. Get and the word out there. There's a, a very important point here. Go ahead. Bill. Uh, uh, you noticed in the different uh, Muslim countries, they, they call it the Arab Spring. Right. Okay. And uh, there's been a lot of revolt and things like this. And we're not saying whether we agree with it or not. That's not the issue. Right. Right. Uh, but. Uh, if you if if the internet can move yeah. people in masses this way, right? What about doing something good for the sake of Allah? And for the sake of Allah, Islamic can't stuff. can't we move people in the same way? Yeah. So imagine if you go back before, if you had to spread a message, how did how was it spread? I would tell you, you tell him, he tell him, right? And to get a thousand people to know about it, it would take quite some time, right? Then let's say you have telephones, okay? Right. So now you can call, and you remember three-way? Yeah, click off yeah call conference call, yeah, right. <laughs> call people on three-way and stuff. Right. But still, <laughs> that was a little bit faster. And then, you know, television, yeah. you know, you can put ads and stuff and get it spread to them. And boom, internet. Internet. Now look at the internet. Yeah. I mean, you can put out a message today, and you can have thousands of people. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of people Millions from one, one message. You can right. have everyone know about it. Right. So the, the internet is very powerful. Right. And that's why... For good, the Muslims should spread yeah, as much spread as they this. can. It help as much as they can, because there is also a lot of evil there. Right, right. You know, yeah. Right. So we want to dominate with the good. We want to dominate with, with good. good, brother Omar. We're gonna be right back. We're gonna take a short break. You guys okay. at home, stay tuned. We have a special guest coming up next. He's actually the Arabic professor, brother Hatem Abu Hafsa. You see him on other channels, on other shows, but now he's part of the Huda TV family. So we want to give him a warm welcome. So stay tuned for more. Let's talk. viewers. Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Oh. Europe's forgotten heritage. This is a sad reminder of the past history of the Muslims in the city. Nowadays, there are no Muslims anymore. These are the mosques that have remained. And it is really sad. Wait a second, this is Morocco. No, this is Tunisia, Algeria, North Africa, Egypt. No, this is all Europe, and this is all part of Spain. Islam spread first in Africa, and then from Africa, it came over to Europe, and then it did developing work in Europe. Now, we look the other way around nowadays. The compass was invented by the Muslims. Many important um, um, inventions came from the time of the Muslims on the Iberian Peninsula. Instead of people becoming less in battles, as we normally know, as we know in battles, obviously, people die. But no, what was happening? The Spaniards recognized and realized the superiority of the Muslims and the treatment that the Muslims gave to the Christians and the Jews in Spain at that time, that they happily accepted Islam, many of them. An Ottoman fountain, as we've seen it before in other places in Greece. Now, it has some Arabic on top, as well as it had some Arabic down where the tap used to be or where the water was coming out. 
pack your bags, grab your passports and join Dr. Steph Karis as he takes us through Europe and rediscovers Europe's forgotten heritage, only on Hoda TV. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to Let's Talk. You guys, we're talking about Huda Academy. Get online, www.hudaonlineacademy.com. I'm so pleased to host our new guest. He's the instructor of Huda Academy Arabic. He's our Arabic instructor. You've seen him on Viewers Pulse. You've seen him on other channels, on other shows, but now he's part of the Huda TV family. So give him a warm welcome. Brother Hatim Abu Hafsa. Assalamu alaikum. Brother, how do you like that? Ha, did I improve? Yes, mashallah. mashallah. <laughs> told you, Muhammad was laughing at me. He said your Arabic is not very good, but no, it's getting better. Yeah, mashallah. <laughs> Have you enrolled in the course? Uh, not, not yet. Not yet. Actually, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> Brother Omar, thank you for staying with us. I want you guys to uh, check out this next clip. It's a clip of Brother Hatem teaching Arabic. I know you've seen it before because your team and yourself have been uploading them to the site. Yeah. So you guys at home, check out this clip of uh, Huda Academy Arabic. When it comes to the Arabic language, we're talking about three different types of words. We don't have any fourth type in the Arabic language. We only have three types of words. We have al-ism, we have al-fa'l, and we have al-harf. Ism, fa'l, and harf. What does it mean, ism? Ism is like a noun, but we don't want to translate these words now because on the way, throughout the course, you're going to know what, what are the different kinds and the different types of ism, what are the different types of fa'l, and what are the different types of harf. So it's just getting into consideration that this is uh, what all the Arabic grammar talks about. Throughout the, seven, the six levels now, because we finished already one, throughout the six coming levels, we're not going to talk about anything other than ism, fa'l, and harf, and their types, and how to form sentences using them, and how to uh, know the function of each one of them in the sentence and how to communicate using them. All right, you guys, I certainly hope you enjoyed that clip. Brother Hatem, tell us what's going on in that video. Well, I had a question also for our viewers here in the studio. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ask these guys. Anybody these guys. knows the uh, difference between ism and fa'l? Well, yeah. Explain a little bit, because you guys keep grilling me, my Arabic so bad. I'm going to hear you guys. <laughs> What's the difference? Does anybody who, know? Who can explain? Go ahead. Go explain the difference. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> Don't be shy. No, I think fi'l, uh, it means action. Yes. That is, uh, whatever we a do. A word that indicates action. Word, uh, so it indicates what, what we do, that all, oh, what right. happens. So, Action only or... Uh, action, it, 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 it has to also, it has to do with time. Exactly. Maybe in the past, Inshallah. in the present, or in the future. Yes, and also we have ism, that is, this it, it denotes the names of, of everything in general. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't so indicate time nor action. No, 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 no. no. So you have a prize that you can give <laughs> <Mashallah. laughs> so I, I think you guys planned this before the show, yeah? Because you're good at that. <laughs> no. And also we have harf. So these are the alphabets. So we, this one, they cannot be used on their own, but, but ex, uh, uh, with the apps of the uh, yes, fairy. Not only the alphabets, but there can be particles of the word that indicates yeah. the place or time. Yeah. Yes. Oh, if, uh, <laughs> so he's going to be your assistant, inshallah, if you need an yes, assistant. Yes, sure, mashallah. I want to, uh, to, 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 to ask one more briefly real quick. What was the original concept for Arabic? Because I know we brought Hatem uh, uh, recently onto the, onto the Arabic uh, team. Mm -hmm. What was the original concept? Well, the original concept were, was uh, to have live classes. Okay. Okay, so the students would uh, interact with the teacher through a virtual classroom. Okay, okay that was the original, okay. That was the original plan. But uh, the problem was that uh, we're dealing with students from all over the world, uh, you know, different internet connections, and right. et cetera. So some students experience, had a good experience with it. Others had uh, connection problems, and okay. they, couldn't, they couldn't benefit that way. So okay. it wasn't the technology itself; it was the uh, the the connections from different parts right, the of the world. The diversity that we were dealing with. Uh, so yeah. Okay, excellent. But Hector, how do you feel about? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, let me just add to go this ahead, point because it's it's just um, quite a big challenge. Okay. To actually start recording uh, okay. Arabic sessions because, um, as Brother Omar just said, it's the normal way is the normal method is that you have it live. Okay. You can have, for example, you can apply the uh, approach, the uh, immersion approach. And this is the approach you prefer. Uh, that's the the best approach, yes, okay. exactly. But this sh it should be in live sessions, okay. so that you see the reactions on the eyes and right. the eye contact. So you know if that pace is okay, if it's not. 
but actually it's a very good um, and it's new and it's challenging also okay uh, to do it as a recorded that's why i use more the method of grammar translation although that's not preferable that's not okay. the best uh, way but i use a lot of english at the beginning and then i go uh, by the pace and by the courses throughout the courses lessening the uh, or reducing the use of the english language okay i have a question for you i'm gonna have to hold it though we have a phone call Suleiman, go ahead brother assalamu alaikum so they met from Egypt, mashallah, but how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Go right ahead, brother. Um, this is my first time watching the program, and I didn't really get your explanation. I really want to know how to apply into the academy and the type of courses they take. Okay, excellent, brother. Thank you so much for your, for your call. We're going to answer you, inshallah, about how to apply uh, for Hooded Academy. Brother Omar, I think you just get online, www.hoodonlineacademy.com, and it's pretty straightforward from there. It's uh, pretty straightforward, but okay. uh, if, if he doesn't know, there's a, a middle column and okay. it has the a list of courses okay and at the bottom of that column if you don't see the course that you want to register for you can click more courses okay and then it gives you a complete list and there's a big orange button right that and says there's a, enroll a now. big a blue button that says register okay simple okay so you click it and then it, you get a video and exp explanation okay course description etc okay and then you can just register from there okay excellent i hope that answers this question thank you brother Omar. An Egyptian who wants to enroll in Islamic studies in English. <laughs> <Mashallah. Mashallah. laughs> Subhanallah. But brother Hatim, you know, I've heard a lot of people say this immersion method was popularized by Berlitz, mm -hmm. but it actually, it, it may not be the best method. There's different methods to teach languages, of course, you know. Sure, what, more what, than 10 methods. More than 10. So, uh, so why is this immersion method so, so popular? Do you believe it's the most effective way? Yes, exactly, because actually it, it immerses you in the language and it puts you in the practice of the language, okay. rather than the theoretical part. Okay. The most, uh, uh, actually, the most important field that I focus on in this grammar, in this basic Arabic course, uh, recorded one, okay. is the theory, okay. more than the practice, because I can't, I, I, I mean, I can't give practice because the practice is given by the students themselves. Right, right. So that's uh, why I always um, uh, insist that the students repeat after me the sentences that I make sure if they're listening it okay. through MP3 or something, oh, they are right. practicing. But the immersion method actually uh, focus on the practicing okay so that you Allah. practice by the skills by listening speaking and uh, okay and the, or the four skills of the language yeah okay then you uh, study the language excellent brother you know we had you on viewers Paul so it was an honor I want you to tell the viewers a little bit about your Arabic background uh, your language background where you studied where you acquired, acquired this these uh, these skills yeah well actually that's very important because sadly some teachers or them I don't want to say the majority of teachers in Egypt or in the Arab world they just uh, uh, based upon the fact that they're Arabs. So okay. this way I can teach Arabic. This okay. is totally incorrect. Okay. Because um, I actually started when I, uh, I started the teaching uh, of language teaching career, teaching Spanish language in the beginning because Mashallah. my major was in Spanish. Yeah, it's interesting. You speak Spanish as well. It's an interesting point. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. SubhanAllah. <laughs> but the way I actually, SubhanAllah, I've, I've uh, I benefited more uh, uh, much from this uh, experience learning uh, Spanish language because they have it uh, categorized throughout the European framework right so while teaching Arabic th this is just a point Arabic is still do uh, it's not situated whether it's the actful the American way of right. teaching language or the European framework okay so till now I'm just like benefiting from the experience that I had learning Spanish okay in the uh, Spanish culture center and teaching Arabic but okay. again to your question answering it of uh, started learning Arabic in the Dar al Ulum, the faculty of Dar al Ulum, which is okay. as I've mentioned in the view of Pulse, it's one of the biggest, it's, it's actually the biggest citadel of, of Arabic in the Middle East. Okay. It's very well known by this. It's called Dar al but it's only uh, like uh, specialized in Arabic and Islamic studies. Okay, more in Arabic. excellent. But thank you, brother. I think we're almost uh, familiar with this book. I believe it's called Arabiya uh, Bayna Yadaik. People use this book. Mm -hmm. We have Kitab Fita Alam al Arabiya, which I believe you're using. We have Kitab al Asasi. There's lots of books. Which book should you choose and why? That's a good question, actually. Till now, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually 100% satisfied with all these books because I've, <laughs> uh, one, of, yeah, one of my researches that I've made in the American University, but it's still not uh, complete yet, was because I teach Arabic also in the American University in Egypt. So the point is, I've, I've tried to compare between all the books. There are actually more than like seven or eight books so teaching many, right? Arabic and English. Right. There are also uh, some books teaching Arabic and Spanish because when I traveled to Spain, I've been like looking in the libraries for those books. So the point is, so many of the books depend on the uh, dialect of the of the of the country oh, where okay. the writer or where the author uh, did it. And this is not good. We agree, right? Yeah, right. sure, sure, it's not good. So that's why you need to base it upon the modern standard Arabic, not the dialect that's okay, spoken. Okay, of course, yeah. 
Yeah, so that's why I always try to, in this course, for example, I use three books, not only the book of Al-Kitab. Okay. I use Al-Kitab and Al-Arabi to Bayinadaik and the book of uh, the Arabic taught in the Islamic uh, Medina. Right. Medina Islamic University. University. Okay. Yes. But each book takes a different approach or methodology to teaching Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got a kind of a diversity through them all. But some people have told me some books are heavy with an Islamic approach mm -hmm. where they emphasize these language of the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, and some don't. That's uh, regarding, ahead. yes, exactly. Regarding the al Arabic to Bayan for example, right. uh, the form, it has no, not a single word in English. Okay? okay. But the book Al Kitab, the one we use in the American University, it has all the question tags and all the uh, in explanations English. in English. Yeah. Okay. Because it was actually made self explanatory, self educative book. Right, uh, excellent, right. Yeah. So but you would recommend that for someone who wants to teach themselves, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay. And that's why it's recommended for the basic Arabic course because actually you are learning a language at your own. Right. At your own pace and by your own way. So yeah. that book is recommendable for that. Okay, yeah, e excellent point. Now, brother, I think, do you want to go live yes, eventually? Sure. Brother Omar, wh wh what do you think about that? What does the future hold as far as the Arabic, Kurd Academy Arabic? Are you guys going to go back to a live at some point or not in the near future? Well, you know, uh, we still have a live course. We, we have a private course. You still do have a private course? Yeah, we okay. have a private course. And uh, it's much easier because it's one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So okay. you can uh, you can use different technologies to, to right, right. reach the reach the goal, uh, but uh, I'm sure uh, uh, Hatem has some ideas for the future. Okay, but it it, it really depends on how things go mm -hmm. with, okay. the, with the recorded lessons. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. By the way, there is a recorded aspect to I mean a live, a live aspect, aspect to to the course. Yeah, they the are webinars. They're webinars. Okay. Have you guys you do a, a webinar a month or something like that? Yeah, or we started to, to, yeah actually once uh, each two weeks. Oh, mashallah. We have live webinar to actually make um, like a revision. A yeah. Revision for the students. Oh, that's effective. Yeah, that's a, that's a way to kind of bridge both both mm -hmm. words. You, you have a live webinar to to go. Let's talk about why it's important to learn Arabic in the first place. Some people might say, well, there's a lot of reasons. Some people simply say everything is translated into English, why should I enroll in Hood Academy Arabic? I want Brother Hatem and then Brother Omar because you have also an opinion being a non-Arabic uh, uh, I would speaker. like to know his answer first. Uh, okay, <laughs> why is it important from your perspective to learn Arabic? People say, you know, it's translated. Like, you don't need to learn Arabic. Well, I mean, uh, imagine uh, having to go over a Chinese text and listen to it. Right, right. You don't know what's, what it is. Yeah. Right, what's, right. What are they saying? Yeah. So I, I use Chinese as, as an example. Yes, but, a very good example. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Arabic, you know, as a Muslim, uh, Allah is speaking to us. Right. And you don't know what's being said. And right. You, and you, you rely on someone else to explain what's being said. And at the same time, that's his interpretation of what's being said. Right. So <clears throat> I'm not saying that you can take pick up the Quran after you learn Arabic and just understand everything. I, I don't, I'm not saying that. You still have to rely on right, right. Uh, the, an explanation. But uh, that's what was my motivation right. to, to learn Arabic, you know, yeah, to, be right. able, to be able to understand the Quran, to understand um, the, the Sunnah, to be able to speak to people that have higher knowledge uh, right. than me, yeah, yeah, good and ask questions and be yeah. able to interact. It's, a, it's an obstacle that you have to accomp accomplish. You can't get around it. Isn't that right, Hatem? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree with Brother Amr because actually that was a, a dilemma that I put myself into while I was making researches in the in Azhar University while I'm making my master's. I used to, to do some research comparing some translations of the hadith of the Arba'in and Nawawiyah, the 40 oh. Nawawi hadiths of our Prophet Muhammad so 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 like in Spanish language. Oh, but Allah. the point is, uh, by, by the way, I'm like going and reading and researching um, the difference between the translation and other translation. And that's the speech of Prophet Muhammad so 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 that's so not so the Quran. Yeah, right. So the point is, regarding the Quran, I've been always wanting to know what is the best translation in Spanish, for example, because that's my uh, professionality or that's yeah. my specific specialty, we can say, specialty, yeah. exactly. So the point is, I didn't reach one. And at the end, I've reached to the decision that translating Quran is not actually... Um, An option. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not a good option. Why? Because the same point that Brother Amr had just said, translation is interpretation. Right. Exactly, it's interpretation. Yeah. So the point is, you can translate the interpretation. For example, yeah. I go to the interpretation of Ibn Kathir, yeah. Al-Qurtubi, yeah. and then I translate the interpretation, so I translate the, the words of Al-Qurtubi himself or Ibn yeah. Kathir himself. That's what's happening. Not the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. That's why you find that one of my brothers, the most famous uh, uh, dua in Latin America, he's now working hard to finish a translation. And I'm actually, I just look like this and say, 
It's Teach just Arabic. this can be in vain, the, the effort. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you won't reach the words of Allah subhanahu wa yeah. ta'ala because the creation cannot reach yeah. the, the creator. Yeah, exactly. may Allah help him, but it's like teach Arabic, learn exactly. Arabic. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> that's our point. We'll be right back. We'll take a short break. Stay tuned for more Let's Talk. to look how to create a website and which Islamic websites to actually visit. What inspired you to create your own website? One of the challenges mm. that we, we, we face every day, the site or the, the application should be accessible worldwide. I remember uh, when I was younger, um, uh, one of my friends uh, asked me to, to convince his father to, to get him a, a desktop, even, even the laptop. Uh, when, you, when you come, if you compare both of them in terms of uh, cost, uh, laptop roughly um, cost twice the money if you, if you, if you compared with the desktop. Hackers, the word hackers, most of uh, the young the youth people are very interesting about that word. They say, hey, I'd like to be a hacker because there is a type of hacker great, doing great job. We call them uh, white hat hacker. Fun for everyone. Three, two, one. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? The firefighter uses what to control fire? Water or rocks? Now these two teams go head to head on pulling the blue rope. Now if one person goes over this line right here, the other team loses. Very simple rules. This challenge is worth five points. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Fun is for everyone. So get ready to have some fun. Check out these cool competitions between kids. It's important to have fun, and it's also important to be a good sport. So tune in to Fun for Everyone. You don't want to miss it. What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Let's Talk Live. You guys get online www.hoodonlineacademy and enroll in Hood Academy, and especially Arabic. Let's go to the studio audience. We have a question from our brother in the front row. Question. Probably, you gotta give me your name or where you're from. Uh, for sure. I'm Abdul Latif Saleh. I'm from Nigeria. Uh, we're in Nigeria. I and a student of Al Hazar University. MashaAllah. Uh, my good. question goes thus Is this academy that you are talking about meant for both Muslims and uh, non Muslims? Uh, the reason why I ask this question is that there are some non Muslims who learn Arabic and Islamic studies in order to oppose Islam. That's a great question, brother. You know, we did put that, uh, I think, brother. The Huda, the, we, but we did put that clip of Dr. Salah explaining Islam. We had a clip for free, right? About uh, is Islam explained that if people, maybe that oh, could be helpful for non Muslims, right? It could, yeah, sure. Yeah, if you, if, isn't sure. that right? If you, you get on the free email list, you get the, uh, a couple episodes of Dr. Muhammad Salah and his program, Islam Explained, right? Yeah, yeah if you, well, uh, to, to, to answer his question directly, is this is uh, Islamic studies for, for Muslims, right. of course. But and, anybody uh, can enroll. But uh, any, anyone can enroll. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah okay, <coughs> excellent. But but I, I have a positive point because it, his point is negative and it, it can be hap uh, happening actually. That, for example, people who have uh, misconceptions, they might learn Arabic in order to put this misconception in the Arab world. But the point is, yeah. I always use the Arabic and I, I prefer this teaching Arabic language to uh, non Muslims as a way of indirect da'wah. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, many, <laughs> people, many people, subhanAllah, they, they want to learn Arabic to start opposing and start uh, being sure. having an aggressive approach uh, against Islam. Sure. But when they know it, actually they they get to know Islam correctly and they get to enter Islam. Yeah. So subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his, it has his way. It goes hand hearts, in hand. Yeah, it's in hands. Exactly. Yeah, that's a, uh, indirect dialogue, like what you said. And I, now what we're talking about, we have a clip from Dr. Muhammad Salah. It's about uh, the Aqidah course. Maybe we can check it out now and the viewers can get a, a little bit of a taste about Huda Academy, Dr. Muhammad Salah. So you guys stay tuned, check out this clip. It's from level one, Aqidah. It's one of our most popular courses on Hood Academy, so check it out. I think it's coming. The first article of faith, 
which is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we agreed that that comprises four matters. Number one, belief in the existence of God. And the second is to believe in the rububiyya, which is to maintain the unity of the Lordship of Allah the Almighty alone. And the third is to believe in the uluhiyya, or the unity of worship. And the fourth is to believe in the unity of al-asma wa sifat the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, you guys, we hope you enjoyed that clip of Dr. Muhammad Salah Akita. I believe that was level one, Brother Omar. Yeah. When you got, what's going on with Akita, by the way? I think it's the most popular course you had mentioned before the show. Well, uh, we're, we're recording level two. Right now. Right now. Okay. And uh, uh, the studio is busy these days. Okay. So there, there have been students that have completed level one. Okay. And they're waiting for level two. So for, for those students, level two, okay. inshallah, is coming. Okay, I know the studio has been busy for a lot of Ramadan programs. So right now, it, we can say it has been a problem, a little glitch, that we haven't recorded level two. But inshallah, after Ramadan, perhaps we'll begin. R you know, I'll be completely honest about it. Uh, Huda, Huda Academy is uh, we, we record lessons when the studio is available. Right, right. So okay. now Ramadan is busy, right? So it's not, it's not like something that uh, is scheduled in, in, the, right, in right. the studio. Okay. Uh, that's an important point because okay. uh, uh, it, it just shows that we, we're just trying to use the resources that we have available okay. to, to try to, to, um, to, right, to, to give these make projects. this happen. That issue it's actually, yes, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, trying yeah. to, I'm sorry for interruption, no, but, but that yeah. issue is that I'm trying to avoid in Arabic because right. it's different. <laughs> yeah, right. Because when you, when you build a step you in forget. Arabic, exactly, you forget uh, and you tell me yeah, about it. I want my, my, my Arabic teacher, I wish he would call in Muhammad Adil because, you know, we, we got going and then I stopped for a while. Then it's like, okay, I'm back to square one. Exactly. Right, exactly. So we, we have point. to avoid that. That's yeah. why we're trying. I'm doing my best to avoid that. Inshallah, alhamdulillah, we have uh, recorded level zero. It's all completed. Uh -huh. And level one also, it's all completed. Okay. And now we're starting to record, inshallah, before Ramadan, hopefully. Inshallah, level two. Level two. Now, how many, how many courses per lesson and how many, how many levels? Yeah, well, we're actually having seven levels. Okay. Zero level and then six. Right. Two for the uh, beginners, A1 and A2. Two okay. for the intermediate, B1 and B2. And two for the advanced, C1 and C2. And this is what system do you base this off? This is from your own ideas? Or you no, that's the European framework. You like, why didn't you choose the American framework? Because I'm, uh, I have uh, studied Spanish. Like, yeah, I have studied Spanish. Oh, that you mentioned that. Exactly. So I'm, uh, I'm acquainted to the European framework. Oh, okay. I, I don't... Yeah, you, you, you have a familiar... Yeah. You're acquainted with it. If this brother right here in the front row, if he signed up for Hood Academy, what level would you put him in? Um, knowing this verse from Al Fatih ibn Malik, I will put him in the advanced. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. Brother, um, I want to, you know, the shows we're coming to an end here. I want to know about Huda Academy. What do you want to tell the viewers at, at home and possible students? Are there any glitches or problems that you've experienced uh, that you want to share with them? Sure. Uh, and the solutions you have for that. Uh, there was a problem with the uh, virtual campus students. Okay. Uh, not receiving the question and answer. Uh, live lessons. Okay. And this is, of course, due to the busy schedule of the uh, of the, uh, the studio the here. that we use. Oh, the shayuk themselves, uh, right, right. Uh, they have uh, hectic schedules, and it's it's difficult to commit to to the scheduled times. So uh, we're 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 trying to figure out the best solution for this. But at the end, inshallah Taala, we'll 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 uh, probably collect questions from students and then have the 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 shuyu uh, answer those questions right. on audio or something like this inshallah ta okay excellent point thank you that's uh, a very important point also I've, I've, we've added in the arabic uh, and we've been inshallah doing this also a feedback like a questionnaire that you fill in in the website inshallah we're going to be adding it oh, okay so that it's we we take the feedback of the students because you can't work like this without taking any feedback of, of those students. Right. So that's very important to And by the way, the, the material that you're teaching with for, for in your courses, like the exams that you made, they're all from you. They're all originally you exactly, created them. Yes. You Especially create, for the basic Arabic course. Right. So you tailored and customized a course for this. So they're really getting exactly. the value. And because you, you have to introduce some Islamic vocab. It's not only uh, right. depending upon the books and that's it. So this was a time investment for you as well. Exactly. Sure. So then you, you create the, the final exam and then you give it to, to the project manager. Exactly, yes. And then he, he uploads and, and you guys yeah. go, go from there, mashallah. But what about degree of difficulty? Uh, how hard have you made it? How e I mean, it's starting, for example, I've, I've taken from the zero level till from the scratch. Zero level means zero no level means Arabic. no Arabic at all. Okay. Scratch. Okay. You start knowing how to write 
okay. as, as drawing the letters and then you start Scratch. knowing how to put the fatha and how to put the dhamma okay. and then how to pronunciate and then go afterwards bit by bit adding the jumla ismiya, the jumla fa'liya, what's okay. mukada, what's khabar and then going You, you go up from there. Way, yeah. and I forgot, I wanted to mention, did you, do, did you provide uh, an entrance exam, a placement exam? Till now, no, because we haven't still yet finished recording all the exams so that whenever, for example, a, a student has his level, for example, in C2, for C2 is not recording, uh, recorded yet. Right, so right. So when we finish, inshallah, recording all then the... Then you'll do that. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That, that's an excellent point because someone put, perhaps would say, you know, I'm more advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, sure. of course, yeah. So what are, uh, Brother Omar, what are some, other, are some other problems that perhaps you've been facing? No live Q&As due to the unavailability of the shayuk. Uh, what about emails? I mean, I'm sure you get a lot of emails, right? Are you able to respond to those in time and solve the problems, or? Well, you know, um, we we do we get do get quite a few emails, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, the problem is uh, sometimes they go to spam. Okay. So we d really didn't get them. Right. Okay. Right. So someone will will uh, send another email and say, "Why didn't you answer?" Right. Or what's, what's going on? So just to let them know that sometimes uh, we do receive uh, emails from spam. So if we didn't. If we didn't respond, then just just go ahead and follow up S and send, send another, another one. one yeah. Right. yeah, okay. But that that happens rarely. Okay, right. But but it could happen. So if a, but we respond to all emails. Okay. For all sure, emails yeah. that re require response. Okay. Yeah. So no, without doubt, I mean, we don't respond to the. Um, uh, may Allah help you and mm -hmm. right you know, because yeah. although you appreciate, but it's the, the sheer yeah, volume. Of course, we appreciate it. But the, the sheer volume is, is so it, high. Yeah, it, we spend, spend forever responding. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we, of course, we appreciate the dua. And yeah, everything. yeah, yeah. Of course, but the Hatem, what and your experience as a professor in a university at the AUC in Cairo? I mean, that's like as far as being a professional. That's like the top of a, a career. You know, that seems very exciting. How is it different teaching here in the recorded session? Is it satisfying in the same way? I mean, because you're actually reaching more people at Huda Academy than the people that you're reaching at the AUC. And these are seekers of knowledge, whereas at there they might be just people for business purposes or you know, people actually, you know, for a variety of reasons. So what's more satisfying uh, from your perspective, teaching here or over there at the AUC? And for sure, teaching here is more satisfying, but it's, it's totally different. As you've just mentioned and you've just said, mashallah, any of the students here are seekers of knowledge. They, we have this Islamic uh, overall uh, objective right. so that you have to, the ability to read Islamic literature and for the most important, the Quran, for sure, and understand it afterwards. But the point is, it's a totally different approach. You, here you have uh, recorded uh, sessions, the recorded session, and there you have live sessions. Here you have this Islamic background, and there you have just, uh, uh, for example, you speak about political and economical right, uh, right. fields. Yeah. Because the students, most of them, they come from the, uh, especially the University of Pennsylvania in America. Oh, okay. They have business, um, master, uh, yeah, business program. administration, yes, exactly. So they come here for the immersion course, okay. so that they be able to work in the Middle East. So the point, the approach is very different. Totally different. Exactly. And the Arabic language is so we have a phone call, but before we take it, the Arabic language is so rich, there's so much vocabulary, so it's totally different, right? So that's exactly. hard for the teacher, right? Yeah. To go to business centers. Let's take this phone call real quick. We have Mohammed from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, brother Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum, Malik. How are you doing? I'm good. I think this is Mohammed Adam, my Arabic teacher. How are you, brother? Yes, sir. Mohammed Adam, how are you doing? Yeah, Malik. Hey, thank you. Thank, great thank you for calling, like brother. You know, I'm always blaming my poor Arabic on you. I feel yeah. I'm sorry. Excuse me? I'm always blaming the fact that I don't speak Arabic. I always blame you, and I'm sorry about that. Well, I, I guess you need to be more committed, brother, for the class. <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, tell us about your experience teaching Arabic. I, I, I know that you are a student uh, uh, graduate as well in the Arabic language. Tell the viewers a little bit about it. Yes, I actually have been uh, teaching Arabic like about uh, three or, two, or, or four years now, and it's, it's really embarrassing when I uh, deal with brothers and sisters from around the world who wants to uh, learn Arabic more and uh, for, to get acquainted with our uh, culture and our religion. Some of them are Muslims, some of them were not. But, but generally speaking, what's really amazing about teaching Arabic is that you deal with different culture. But I want to speak uh, about uh, a little bit about Huda Academy, the project that uh, I'm, I'm working here actually in Huda TV. And you cannot imagine the, the effort that we spend here in Huda TV, in Huda TV to uh, produce such a great project preparing the, uh, the syllabus and uh, all the subjects and the, the PDFs for the topics for the students and organizing everything. It needs a lot of effort and there is a great team of uh, hardworking people who are, uh, uh, behind this, who are working behind the scenes for uh, this project. And I, I really uh, recommend all the brothers and sisters to uh, go uh, to register for this course, for, for the courses online. And it's, it's really a good step for non-Arabs uh, to uh, begin their studying of Islamic studies online, and because if 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 the Muslims everywhere uh, uh, has their own scholars from their own countries, 
the, the people from the country themselves, they appreciate uh, if you have your imam from your own culture and speak, speaking your own language. So, uh, brothers and sisters, if you want to um, be an imam of your community, uh, the, of, uh, of, or if you want to be a scholar, uh, this is a very good step to take to register in Huda Academy. Thank you, brother, so much for those kind words. and everything. Brother, real quick, uh, what is your favorite uh, book to teach from? Which book do you prefer? Well, I really like to uh, to work with Al Kitab Al Asasi uh, because it's, it's kind of Islamic oriented. It has some uh, Islamic texts in it, so I, I really am really comfortable with uh, dealing with it because it teaches the people not only uh, the Arabic but some of the Islamic concepts. Thank you, brother, so much, Muhammad Adel. Thank you so much for calling in. He made an excellent point, among others, brothers. He said that it's important to learn Arabic also when you're from a non-Arabic speaking country in order to spread knowledge. And people look for local imams that speak the local language as well uh, as the Arabic language as well. Isn't that a great point, brother? Yes, Adel? exactly. When I, when I, uh, actually, I'm still in the field of da'wah in Latin America. The point is, we need to um, complement each other. We need to, like, yeah, right. each one has, for example, Arabs who know speak Spanish language. Mashallah, they right. have to be in the work or in the field of teaching Arabic because that's what they do best. Right. On the other hand, uh, Latins or any other nationality who actually study Islamic uh, studies, right. they should ha sh they should be the local da'a yeah. because they know the culture, they know the whereabouts, they yeah. know the attitudes of the people. Right. So that's why it's it's a complementary uh, da'a. Yeah, that's a great point. Brother, on the commercial the promo for Hood Academy you had quoted a, a great uh, statement from Omar ibn Khattab I love yes. this comment do you remember can you repeat that for the viewers it just emphasizes the importance of learning Arabic yes because uh, Omar ibn Khattab may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him he said learn uh, Arabic because it's from the religion so imagine that when you learn Arabic and he's saying this to the Sahaba to the companions who, who, who are Arabs I love this point go ahead so the point, you continue yeah. yeah yeah they're Arabs and he told them to learn Arabic right right so right. imagine this is the point that that's why I said in the beginning it's not enough to be an Arab to, be, to teach Arabic it's not even enough to be an Arab to be able to read Quran right. you need to uh, enhance your Arabic language right and read more and then read in the tafsir and then yeah try to understand Quran for Arabs themselves right. so imagine the effort, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward it for non Arabs. Yeah, of course, I and mean, this is something that's incumbent on all of us. I think that's a great point. But Rama, you originally, I know you're a web developer and product manager for the county based in, here in Egypt, but you originally moved to this country, I believe, to, to learn Arabic. Right, I came to Egypt to study at one of the uh, centers here. One of the centers, <coughs> excuse me. And, um, and I, a, another point here uh, that was mentioned earlier uh, I don't think it's enough for someone to. To, to come and learn Arabic and then think that they can uh, master the language. Right, okay. You know, in, uh, in a, a couple of classes or something like this. Right. It's really a lifelong commitment. Uh, right. commitment. And even after, I think it was, even with Huda Academy, that we can go on and on and on and on right. with uh, language classes on different levels. So uh, that's an important point. That's for someone like me that came to Egypt to, to learn. Right. And now, alhamdulillah, you can, you can get online and you can, you can study Arabic from right. home and you don't have to travel uh, right, right. Like, like this. But you have to be committed, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be committed, Yeah, of course. Of course. We have about a minute left. Before I ask you guys for your final, final thoughts and message for the viewers, real quickly, I ask you on viewers, Paul, so I want you to, to say it again. Of all the Arabs, who speaks the best Arabic? I know the Egyptians have their own dialect. Uh, I thought Yemen people speak the best Arabic. What do you think? I think, they're, as I've said before, it's Syrians and Iraqis. Okay, you think oh, they have, because they pronounce letters better, whereas in Egypt we're not pronouncing Qaf, mm. and in the and middle... And the Tha and the Jim, the right. all of these are in not the Hali, In the Gulf, they're, speak, they're pronouncing Qaf with Jim. With the Bab, Va. Right. So it's important for all of us to speak proper Arabic and in, 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 in Arabic as well. And that's a beautiful point you bring up. He told the Sahaba to learn Arabic. So we all have to learn Arabic. It's a great challenge. So that's very good. That's Can you give us a, a really quick 30 seconds uh, final message for the viewers and, and tell them why they should enroll in the Academy Arabic? Well, actually, the main important port, uh, point in learning Arabic is that it's the gate. It's the door that opens uh, the gateway to Islamic knowledge. Okay. So when you start with the Arabic, then you have started with the correct step. Yeah, that's the first step, the, the, the right step, one step closer, as we yeah, say, exactly. Hadi TV. Sure. Brother Mar, do you have a final uh, message for the viewers here, for the potential students and the people who are already students? Uh, I would say that uh, if you support Huda TV, uh, you can support Huda, Huda Academy in any way. Yeah, any, okay. If it's becoming a student, if it's sponsoring students, okay. if it's uh, spreading the message to, to other people, okay. if you, if you uh, believe in the message of Huda TV and the vision, and the mission of Huda TV, then it's, you're obligated to, to support it in okay. whatever way you can. All right, thank you guys for joining me. I always love to have both of you guys. It's a fun program. Hope to have you back. Maybe in six months we can talk about what you guys have done since the last episode. 
uh, since the, the, the launch of Huda Academy. Sure. Thank you guys in the studio audience and mashallah, fluent Arabic speakers from all around the world. You guys at home, thank you for watching. Let's talk live on Huda TV. Look forward to seeing you next time. Assalamu alaikum. When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you tread again seems all uphill When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you tread again seems all uphill When the funds are low and the dips are high and you want to smile but have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must but do not ever quit Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt